Guess so, bye, Ben me, Mood Horror. Ladies and gentlemen, the biggest attack happened again. Gow, gow. Ladies and gentlemen, I know. I know you're like, damn, Muda, this is like the seventh time I've seen this title. No, no, no. It might be the 700th time. But what am I supposed to do when it keeps happening again and again? Now, of course, what happened, ladies and gentlemen? Well, today's cyber attack comes out of good old Australia, the land down under. And, you know, I love Australia. Beautiful country. Beautiful things to see. Absolutely ass internet. I've never been to a country with, like, the worst internet telecom services than even Canada. Look, I thought I paid bad here, but people in Australia just are getting fisted, okay, badly. All right, you got spiders, cobras, everything to deal with, and then on top of that, shit internet? I mean, truly, it is hell. But you know what? With each place comes its pros and cons. Now, the reason why I'm into it is because, obviously, I've got some Aussie fans, but I've also got Opti. Okay, now Optus, for those of you who don't know, is like uh, the biggest telecom company in Australia, if not the biggest, okay? You know, it's up there with Telstra, Vodafone, basically every other service out to destroy you. Telecom companies and airlines are like the same thing, okay? You just pick whoever fucks you the least. Now, of course, when it came to Optus, a company owned by Singapore Telecommunications, Optus ended up getting hacked. Now, the reason why this is one of the largest attacks is... 9.8 million users ended up being hacked, okay? Around 10 million. Now, the reason why this is the biggest is if you look at Australia's population metrics, 25.6 million people live there, making it a smaller population than the whole of Canada and the state of California. Yes, these are low populated areas. Now, to give you a percentage metric, okay? If we do some basic mathematics here, 9.8 divided by 2. 25, let's just do 25.6 multiplied by 100. We're looking at around 38% of the country has been actually hacked, okay? All of their stuff has been leaked out. Now, I've looked through the dark web, so to speak, and, you know, looking through Optus, you find a bunch of markets where uh, people are claiming to leak this database. Now, according to this, uh, this is actually posted on, like, a hacker forum, but, like, there was a user that apparently claimed to be, like, uh, making, like, a $1.5 million ransom, which is nothing for this data price, for, like, this data, like, leak at all. Like, that's a very small amount of money for how much information. But, of course, this person, who I don't believe at all, says, like, too much, uh, too many eyes. We will not sell data to anyone. We can if we even want to. I don't believe anything, anybody got a cold feet, anybody got cold feet. I actually believe, like, Optus has been leaked 100% as claimed by themselves. Uh, the other big reality of it is, one thing they mentioned is no bug bounties, which is true for Optus. You think for any large company, they should have a bug bounty? Uh, a bug bounty is typically, like, where they'll point out, hey, if you find anything wrong, we're going to pay you money. Money, which is a good thing to have, uh, especially when you're a big telecommunications company or just a big tech company in general. The other big problem with this is like, even if this is like a kid, it could be like as embarrassing as them messing around with like, you know, REST APIs or just something open on their network. Uh, it could have been like a big open gaping hole because some kids will play around with exploits and scripts all the time. And unfortunately, some of them may work and these people get access to a massive treasure trove of data, unfortunately. Now, one of the biggest scary, one of the scariest things about hacks like this is the possibility for how badly people can get their identity stolen. But before we get into it, let's actually look at the words of them. So back in 22nd of September, so just over a week ago, Optus is investigating unauthorized access of their current and former customers' information. So you know I said earlier that even I was into Optus? Every time I travel to Australia, I pick up Optus uh, SIM cards because I need to have cell service in Australia. My roaming is shit when I go to Melbourne, so I always have to pick up local cell service. So now that I have given my information up, you know, I don't know how old this hacker database breach can be. If it's anything past 2015, it could potentially even have my information into it too. Upon discovering this, Optus shuts down the attack immediately, obviously, and they're working with the Australian Cybersecurity Center to mitigate any risks to the customers, alongside the Federal Police of Australia and the Information Commissioner and all the regulators involved. They're devastated. 
to discover that they have been subject to a cyber attack. You know, I always wonder what the security on these companies are truly like. You know, to be honest with you, there's a few ways companies like this can be hacked, okay? There's only speculation because they've never really revealed it. All they can say is that they've, they've come across uh, some tiny, small exploit in their system that was basically used and abused by hackers. But to me, as somebody who's seen this, I have to imagine that it could be a billion things. It could be something similar to like SolarWinds, where some software in their actual chain, in their use, was hacked in of itself in a supply chain attack or something down the road. And that software was still being used by Optus, which is exactly what hackers exploited to reach their own network. It could be something like Log4j. Remember when we looked at that Minecraft hack, all right, where basically they found a serious exploit in the logging system for JavaScript and were abusing it? Sorry, not JavaScript. I think Java, both of them are separately. But they found a logging exploit that basically allowed them to run arbitrary code. Basically really, really bad. Or it could be something like social engineering. So they could have had somebody like navigating through their human support networks, human lines, and abusing the system that route. There's a lot of ways that this could be attacked. A lot of ways this could have been done. But at the end of it, the result is a lot of users' information just got leaked. So, of course, according to them, what did get leaked? And this is where it gets really fucking scary. So, obviously, you've got names, your date of birth, phone numbers, email addresses, and for a small subset of people, so not all 9.8 million, I think it's somewhere around 10 to 12,000 users, they ended up having their addresses, their ID document numbers, such as their driver's license numbers, because each driver's license comes with an identifiable number, and their passport numbers. Of course, the payment detail and account passwords were not compromised. I have to assume those were encrypted and salted in a special way, where those are not going to necessarily be the ones affected. But of course, if you ask me, driver's licenses and passport numbers should receive the same level of encryption and security as passwords do. These are very, very important IDs, and they can be used to absolutely cause some serious identity theft. Now, now, of course, they've said that it's completely safe to use. They basically plugged up every leak that they have. Now, of course, that's always bullshit because who knows how unsecured networks can really be. Uh, you can never really provide a 100% guarantee. So don't, don't t take that with a grain of salt. Be very careful when using any service. Now, of course, Optus is doing whatever it can to provide Equifax protection. So credit monitoring, all that shit. They're basically allowing a lot of these users who they identified as 14,900 users who basically basically have had their Medicare ID numbers, apparently, too. We have identified 14,900 valid Medicare ID numbers that have not expired. All the customers who have a Medicare card that is not expired will be contacted within 24 hours. There are a further 22,000 expired Medicare card numbers exposed. What's hilarious to me is how a fucking cell service actually has all of this information available, it seems. Like, it's wild to me how a cell service service, a telecom, somebody you just buy internet and cell phone services apparently had access to these ID numbers. I don't even know why companies require this. You know, it's very rare that even in Canada, I'm willing to give up my social insurance number. Like, uh, unless I believe it's like a bank or something, you don't have to necessarily provide such, you know, insane information to anybody. But of course, in this case, some of these users, tens of thousands of these, have had some serious information like leaked. Now, of course, they've said somewhere around 10,000 individuals are at risk of identity fraud, and they're the ones that are being contacted and assisted the hardest. One thing that also gets me on this is, like, obviously being apologetic isn't the final end-all be-all. It's going to take a lot more for a lot of these companies to realize, man, maybe we should spend the extra few bucks, the pennies, to make sure everyone is safe. There's actually class action lawsuits that have kicked up, so if you're Australian, you should go check up your law firms and see if you know you can get your hands on some of this because if you have your data breach it's literally up to the company to make sure this doesn't happen look they can go all the way over they can do whatever they can bug bounties actually you know high, actually spending the money to ensure proper security and if they're not doing that you need to make sure it's known the government's pissed the people should be pissed and these people should be paying for their mistakes. So to understand about why this stuff is so bad, when you get databases like this publicly out in the wild, right? 
you know, it's not that you have to be worried about the big government or these big companies tracking you because they will. But when they track you and store this level of information so haphazardly, it gets leaked out and a lot of bad hackers, a lot of bad actors will use that information to start up credit cards, start up, you know, new things in your account. I've had credit card fraud happen in my name. And unless you have safeguards already in place or you have the ability to counter it effectively and know what you're doing, it can be absolutely catastrophic. Hell, even if you know what you're doing and you've been hit with credit card debt and you don't have the funds to pursue any legal action or stop it or or the know-how really or the access to lawyers that can help you or the legal system it can still be incredibly catastrophic identity theft is some seriously scary shit okay to know that when you're actually doing something serious in your life and all of a sudden they tell you over the phone out of nowhere that you got a ten thousand dollar debt credit card ridden or people start calling you for collections and apparently it is legitimate but it also isn't that's some really really scary shit to deal with and unless you know what you're doing and how to navigate that minefield it can be an absolutely devastating scenario so yeah australia's like big telecom company did get hacked and based Based on the amount of people that have been hacked and the overall percentage, it is in fact one of the largest cyber attacks. Don't ever take this one, you know, lying down and take a dandy. I may not be Australian, but going to this country, okay, and giving my information up to Optus puts even me at risk. A Canadian person who, who just visited their country and bought a SIM card off of them. Again, for active users for Optus, make sure you know what's going on. I bet there's a fair amount of users who still have no idea what the fuck actually happened and are still with the service. Again, cyber attacks happen, and I'm not blaming Optus for completely letting this happen under their run. Obviously, they have a talented team of engineers who are working around the clock to ensure actual safety for their networks. But anybody who works in this field will tell you no network is ever truly safe. Exploits happens all the time. Social engineering attacks happen all the time. I think what's baffling to me is just how much information was sitting in an Australian telecom, enough to the point where they have like driver's license numbers. Hell, I don't even know why the fuck they would have passport numbers of all things. I'm trying to even remember the last time I went and got a SIM card from them if I even had to give them my passport number or any of that information. It's truly baffling stuff to me. But ladies and gentlemen, if you're an Australian user who had Optus, Make sure you're totally safe going on the next few days. Monitor your credit. Make sure you're totally fine. Make sure you're happy and dandy. Uh, because, uh, again, identity theft is a scary fucking vixen to come across. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.